Welcome to Ebert Enterprises. Uh, I want to introduce our family. First of all, Renee, uh, we've lived here since 1987 when we got married. Um, our oldest, Jordan, and our daughter, Whitney. Um, we are the sixth generation. They would be the seventh generation um, to uh, uh, be involved in agriculture. Hi, I'm Tim Schneider, CEO and co-founder of Investors Community Bank. Today we're here with Randy Ebert from Ebert Farms. Thanks again for having us today, Randy. Really excited about this tour. As you know, I grew up on a dairy farm, so getting back to my roots a little bit today. Tell us a little bit about uh, what we're looking at behind us here. Uh, as dairy, uh, it, it, it starts here. And uh, um, we've got a heck of a crew here that uh, cares for animals on a 24 hour basis. How big is this, this parlor? This is a carousel, right? So Tell us a little bit about the carousel. So this is an 80 stall rotary turning in about six seconds each time. So the animal's on for about eight minutes. Um, we have uh, a staff of five people around it, each with a duty. And they rotate those duties as they work their way around. How many cows do you milk an hour? So we're trying to turn about 4,100 cows through every seven and a half hours. Wow, that's impressive. My dad milked uh, 160 cows in stall barn back in the 70s and 80s. And uh, when we started in the mid 90s here, started with a little double six parlor and a couple hundred cows and three employees. And, and today that's growing to, um, like I say, 70 some employees care for about, uh, about 5,000 cows and another 3,500 heifers. And then probably, what do we got here? Somewhere around 2,500 beef also. So Randy, tell us a little bit more about this area of the farm and what this does and the importance of, of this to your operation. So there's, there's one of the critical parts of the farm is obviously when mama has a baby and getting that baby started. And um, we have a uh, group of uh, dedicated people back here that their expertise is, is totally based on animal care and have the patience and, and the detail to work with babies. Randy, tell us a little bit more about this part of your operation. This this is the next step after they're weaned, I assume, right? So so, so this is, we, we bring our calves back here. The first uh, week they're, they're, we're hand bottling until their suckling habit is aggressive. Then we bring them into these auto feeders and then they have a little RFID type button in their ear that will allocate when they should be fed and how much they should be fed. Normally, if you walk into a calf barn somewhere, they see a body and they think they're gonna get fed and they start ballering. And if you notice how quiet it is here, um, they don't associate the people with feeding because they get that from the auto cap feeder. The implementation of the new technology like their RFID tags to auto feed them is amazing. Randy, tell me a little bit about um, your beef operation, which is kind of unique and then the potential vertical integration that you're trying to accomplish? Um, we're on like year 11 or 12 or something like that of experimenting with Angus on, on, on our dairy cows and having a facility that was able to do some outdoor raising of, of beef, we started raising more and raising more and little by little that has worked our way towards, okay, how can we add some value to that? This is our number one expense of what we do. But in the end, we've got to feed what we grew to the cows. I'm here with Chris, operations manager at Ebert Enterprises, and he's going to tell us a little more about their feed facility here and some of the ingredients that they're feeding the animals. This is our feed shed. Um, if we look over, we have multiple different bays that we store different commodities in. Um, we feel that it's very important to store these commodities inside just due to the shrink factor and price of these different commodities. So this mixture we would call a premix. It's a mix of all the different commodities into one mix, so it's easier for the feeder to load them into the mixer. Number one, it helps save time just for more efficiencies. And two, it's a lot more accurate because you're only dumping these smaller ingredients in once into a batch. Okay, I'm here with Jordan Ebert. Uh, Jordan is part of the Ebert Enterprise here, uh, the son of, uh, of Randy and Renee Ebert. And one of the things that Chris touched on when he talked about the feed facility here was the shrink. And I'd like Jordan to explain what that really means. So my view of shrink is, is really any amount of, well, time, energy, monies um, that are invested into a crop. Um, so that, that's the seed, that's the fertilizer, that's the, the ground. Any of that time, energy, money invested into that that is then not recouped 
up into, um, well, essentially milk, manure, maintenance for the animals, or, or meat. It's any amount of feed that is created and lost along the way that doesn't go towards those sort of four M's. Our business would be shaped on controlling costs and there's no better one to start with than the feed area. And, and, and there's just spend. so many dollars at stake there that uh, um, just have to be, have to be uh, accounted for. In, in the 80s, this was the top producing um, DHIA herd in the county. His gentleman's name was Donnie Brightlow, a true cow man. He would have been um, the generation that was all in in the 70s and that was 80s with automation. So the original buildings are right in the center, but every one of these other buildings are all repurposed buildings. What we always try to emphasize in order for something to be sustainable, it has to be economical. Because if it isn't economical, it can't be done long term. I think the most exciting thing is we brought in a conservation coordinator about a year and a half ago. He's the guy that makes us think, what, did we do that right or didn't we do that right? And um, I, I really think it's pretty cool to uh, have someone on staff that always makes you um, second guess, are we doing the best we can? Challenges you. Yeah, yep. that's great. So, some great things. Thank you for sharing. So, um, we very much appreciate you taking time today and we appreciate your business for the last 24 years. We're celebrating our 24th anniversary today as a bank, and I think you were one of our early customers, if I recall. You were in the custom heifer raising business to start, right? Yes. When we first started working together. So Randy, I'd be curious um, for you to share a little bit of um, what your relationship has been with Investors Community Bank and why you, you work with us. I, I like to have a lot of flexibility, and, and, and your bank has allowed us to do that. So to take a little bit of in their shoes, I like the fact that you guys have the boots on the ground and you're gonna to get to see us in our environment, whether it's at the at, out, out, out in the barn, whether it's uh, at the table with our family. And I agree with you. I think getting to know the customer on their turf and understanding their business is important. So thank you again, Randy, for, for sharing the day with us. Thank you for all yeah. your work. Thank you. Yep. Well, we're just wrapping up the tour here at Ebert Enterprises. I wanna thank Randy, Renee, Whitney, and Jordan for taking us on this wonderful tour and allowing us to walk in your shoes today. That's a wrap.